They're running wide open at Milwaukee today. What a clash. The oldest major speedway meets the newest major series. NASCAR's super trucks are here today. And two of the principals are still. Row three is Rick Corelli from Denver, Colorado and Jack Spray. In row four, it's Butch Miller, the current super truck point leader and Mike Bliss. In row five, Rodney Combs, his first effort of the super trucks, and P.J. Jones. For row six, Bobby Strait is there and Johnny Benson Jr. and only his second truck appearance. Row seven is Scott Legacy and Steve Portengay. In row eight, it's Bill Sedgwick, two-time Winston West or NASCAR West champion, and Dave Resendez from Massachusetts. Row nine is Toby Butler and the great Sammy Swindell. In row 10, it's Bob Kazalowski and another Chrysler product, and John Nemechek. Row 11 is Walker Evans from California and Bobby Brevak, the former ARCA champion. Row 12 is John Kinder, youngest driver in the field at 19, and Jerry Glanville, the former coach of the Houston Oilers and Atlanta Falcons. Row 13 is T.J. Clark and Tony Roper. Row 14 today, his first appearance, Ken Allen, and starting beside him, Kerry T. Further back, in that last position from California comes Ron Esau. That's your lineup as we get set to go truck racing today on CBS. We're a lap away from getting this one under green. Now remember, this has a different format what we usually see. There's the breakdown of the field, 13 Chevrolets, 12 Fords, four Dodges. Dodge has yet to win in the series. Chevrolet has dominated until Bristol when Ford won. Give you the uh, race analysis here. See the field getting set for a go. Total purse, $156,000. It's 125 laps to be run in two segments, Ned. Yes, they'll run halfway, and then we'll have a period of about 10 minutes. They can come in and do anything to the trucks they want to do during that 10 minutes. And uh, usually you see a lot of uh, adjustments made on the cars during that period. Change of time. anything you want if you can get yeah. it done in 10 minutes. Hard to believe that's a nine and a quarter banking out on those corners, Kenny Wallace. It might be negative nine and a quarter. It's very, <laughs> very flat here at the Milwaukee Mile. You go in there about 125 or 30 miles an hour, and it looks negative, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir, you do. I'll tell you what, when you go into a flat corner like this, as you see on the racetrack right now, it's a little bit hairier than going into a banking, say, at Daytona or Bristol. You have something to hold you. Here's Mike Joy. And along with that halftime rule, no pit stops during the running of the race. You cannot change tires unless they are flat or flat spotted, and an NASCAR official approves it. Otherwise, if you change a tire, it's a five-lap penalty per tire, a cost containment rule. And they've done that to the very best. Skinner got nailed with that five-lap penalty last time out. There you see that number three, Mike Skinner. And we got Ron Hornaday's in-car fired up for you today. Remember, he's won three of these races. He starts third, the three-time winner this year, Ron Hornaday. In a car that's owned by Teresa Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt's wife. You know, the tire rule should be very interesting for this race because, like I said at the outset of the, uh, the show, the track is very old surface, so I think somebody who's leading early just might not, you know, be that great at the end. Whoever really uses their head and, and stays easy on their tires. We saw Joe Rutman there who'll be starting in fourth position, and here's Butch Miller. He'll be finding his way up from seventh this afternoon. Current super truck point leader, Butch Miller. He said he made a lot of changes on that truck this morning. Changed all four springs and a lot of other things on it, trying to get it to handle around here. I predict that he'll hit it pretty good. Butch is a very smooth race car driver, and uh, race truck driver, that is. Both. And car. <laughs> and, and car, car driver. You're and safe there. It should be, it should be good to watch him today. He's, he's very experienced here. For 125 miles on CBS, our first our inaugural moment with the trucks is ready to happen. Green is down. Oh, we got one turn and they came down. Uh, Kazlowski's vehicle also caught up in that one. And Jerry Glanville's number 81, the third vehicle. Coming down for the start. They crunch him a little. Well, Ken, you said it was going to be gnarly. I didn't know it was going to be that quick gnarly. The, <laughs> they must have really got uh, to cut some people off there. Yeah, what a disappointment it has to be for those that were involved. There's Bob Kevlowski, who has had a lot of good runs in this Dodge truck this year. But, boy, you can see the sheet metal dangling from it now. And the 14 car. Yeah. Truck. That's Look, uh, John Kinder. John Kinder's machine. How much do we have to pay every time we say car? 
It'll be a, well, we'll lower it to 50 cents. So every time we say, uh, say car, we got to put 50 cents in the kitty. Uh, Mike Joy won't go along with that. They pay a dollar. <laughs> T.J. Clark's number 23 also got caught in that. It kept going, but it hit the brakes. Got taken. T.J. Clark, number 23 on pit road. Glanville is in on that first lap, and we see John Kinder in as well. Furthest anyone has come to win one of these races this year was back at uh, the 16th position, where Skinner started in Phoenix, Arizona, and went on to victory. Chevys had knocked out eight wins before they were stymied at Bristol in that great performance by Joe Rutman at Coca-Cola. Let's take another look at that start, if you will, gentlemen. This is it. Okay, you see the base car pull off the track. You see it involved, and and you can see the 14 truck coming on down pit road. John Kimball. Here's another angle. Looks like Glanville came to shooting up to got caught. Oh, uh, Bob, Bob Keselowski, I believe, hit. I know he's the one that hit the 21 truck off Toby Butler on the start. There, 14 spun, coming spun out. Spun Butler into the middle of the pack. Lost the whole nose piece off number 14 of John Kinder as he started to bring his uh, board out on the course and there's that 21 of Toby Butler that got wrapped as they came to the green flag. On the mile, let's look again at what happened. Okay, they get the green flag and head down towards the start finish line and you can see it looks like a he else was just at the mercy of who was in front of him. And Glanville had no place to go. He got caught up. That was not his fault. Here's Dick Burger. Toby, Toby Butler's truck has been pushed behind the wall here. Second week in a row, Toby, you've been crashed. What happened today? I don't know. I'm, the guys in front of me were stopped. Somebody missed a shift or something. And, and I don't know where the guys behind me thought they were going. But, you know, it's, it's tough luck, I tell you. Uh, his other truck is bent up and is on a trailer behind the wall. This is the only truck he had left in the stable, and it's a mess. Mike Joy. Thanks, Dick. Bob Keselowski has been in and out for repairs. His truck got sheet metal damage at both ends, but now it seems they've got that sheet metal free of the tires. He can continue. Just up the way, uh, Jerry Glanville getting repairs to the front nose piece. The hood is bowed up on his truck. Kerry Teague also damaged to the left front, but he will be able to continue. The question is, is the alignment bent out on any of these trucks, and how will they handle over this first half distance? Six vehicles were involved in that truck crash. Kazalowski's 29, Glanville's 81, Toby Butler, who you just heard from in the 21, John Kinder in the 14, T.J. Clark, and Kerry T. got a piece of that one, too. We have now completed four laps going back to green as they come to the line right now. Under caution to get this 125 miler underway. And jumping out in front is the Chevrolet of Skinner, staying right with him, is Hornaday, and Setzer maintains third in the back straightaway. Joe Rutman in fourth place. And in fifth place is Rick Corelli. Jack Sprague back there in sixth, and the number two, Mike Bliss in seventh, with Butch Miller showing in eighth. And P.J. Jones in ninth. Butch Miller trying to make a pass on P.J. Jones in turns one and two. This number three truck of Mike Skinner has been very dominant all year long. And I asked a lot of people, why is he so dominant? They say horsepower and a Richard Childers team test constantly. This is one of the well high funded trucks of the whole series. And you see he's out front right now, but he's holding off another uh, great funded team of uh, Teresa Earnhardt's with Ron Hornaday at the wheel. And they take third is that Chrysler. Number 30, what a story. Dennis Setzer qualified outside the front row. Incidentally, Dennis Setzer is on the pole for tomorrow's running of the Grand National 250 miler here. And it will be the last performance by that Alliance team. He gave it everything and a little bit more in his qualifying run. Here is Sammy Swindell trying to make a pass down on the inside. He's in the blue number 38. Blue and white number. You 
know, the number 38 truck of Sammy Sudell on the inside, you see there, he is a legendary sprint car racer, runs dirt tracks all over the United States. Halfway through the season, he's really starting to show a lot of promise, leading the event last week in Bristol, and now he's racing very hard with Billy Sedgwick in the 75 car yeah, truck. That's <laughs> 16. Swindell is going to leave here, go up and run on the dirt up in Denver, Colorado for a couple of nights, then head over to Fargo, North Dakota. He made the pass, came off of the turn low. Well, now Cedric coming back up on the outside in the truck number 75. Cedric running pretty good on the outside there, Kenny. Yeah. Ned, this is what horsepower does. It really shows up on this racetrack. He's pinning the 38 truck down, and let's see if the 75 truck comes back. Well, it looks like uh, the 38 truck finally gets a good bite. That's all for 16, folks. John Nemechek, Joe Nemechek's brother in the 87 in the hunt here. And he moves on. Evidently, Sedgwick's truck just won't stay down low in the turns. And look how low Nemechek was. He was below that yellow line, but it got him up beside of Sedgwick as it hit him to turn one. Legacy runs just in front of him in the 24 in the 15th position. And Swindell is closing up. Two-time outlaw champion just in front of this matchup for 17th position. Nemechek in the 87. On the outside is the 75, Sedgwick. And back up front, Ken, you see Dennis Setzer had dropped back behind Mike Skinner and Ron Hornaday. Now he is closing in on them. They've got two Chevrolets out front and a Dodge running in third place closing in. John Kinder was back on pit road and came back on the track. You can really tell the difference. These front-running trucks are right on the bottom of the racetrack. The tr trucks running mid-pack around 13th, 14th are running high. As the truck in front, the black truck, and the second, they're running really low. Let's watch Hornaday, the second truck. See, he's way coming down low. And that's the fastest way around this racetrack. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, that yellow line was put there as a blend line to come into the pits or go out of the pits. And here they are using it as racetrack. You know what throws everybody for a really, really wild ride here is that the Indy cars run here. Well, they have so much downforce, they put a big black groove way high. You get on this racetrack, you go, well, I'm gonna run high. But that's the Indy cars, they can do that. They have a tremendous amount of downforce. We gotta start a whole new groove and run right down on the bottom of the track. And that's where Skinner is right now, continuing to lead. Only two races this year have been won from the pole, and they were both won by Skinner at Portland, Oregon, and at Louisville, Kentucky. Here's Dick Berkman. We're talking about the line that Hornaday is taking here, that nice low line. This is the very first time Hornaday has ever run here. How do you find that line? David Green, the Grand National driver, showed up and offered to help. Why? Green's brother drives for Dale Earnhardt in the Grand National Series. This is another Earnhardt-owned vehicle, so it's kind of a family deal that they have going on. Green climbed up on top of the truck, watched what Hornaday did, then he actually fired one of Hornaday's fire suits, got in the car, took it around, made a couple suggestions, and Hornaday picked up three tents, and he is now flying. And David Green is spotting this afternoon for Hornaday. David Green just went out there, and, and then he him all around the track for about an hour just stayed on the radio and coached for today through this mile. As Dick Bergman talked about, no shame in that. The first time these trucks have come to this racetrack, hey, let's let's cut through it all. Let's find the fastest way around the track. Put a driver in there. He's my friend. Help me out. And then all of a sudden, he's really quick. Not that he didn't know what he was doing. He just never been here before. Absolutely. And, and this is a, a very unique racetrack. You would not think that you would run this low one. And so you go out there, and as you said earlier, you sort of follow that groove that the Indy cars had put down here, and boy, that doesn't work for these trucks. Enter and turn three here. This is difficult. Watch how bumpy it is there. You see the camera go up and down? That is the roughest part of this racetrack, entering turn three, but you cannot get no lower than this right here. He's doing a fantastic job, but the truck in front is staying a little bit ahead of him, and I think he's got a little bit more motor than uh, the Ron Hornaday truck in front of the second. Skinner, Hornaday. Setzer, one, two, and three, and just behind them in fourth, Rick Corelli is on the move. Corelli has picked up the spot. Yeah, Joe Rutman has dropped back quite a bit, and he has dropped back to the eighth position. He was running in fourth position, but in the last two laps has dropped four positions. That uh, six truck of Corelli is about three seconds back from the front three. Quite an interval there. There you can see the red truck of Joe Rutman who was up in fourth place, and he's right in the middle of that pack, sort of towards the end of that uh, second pack. 
I think this group right here is still trying to sort their way out. This group here is about fifth, sixth, tenth position through there, and they're not handling as good as the trucks in front. You see Rick Corelli leading, coming off a of turn two, and what a fight behind them. Chevrolet, one and two, Dodge and three, Chevrolet fourth. And at the fifth time, the Chevy's taken over there. Jack Sprague, Mike Bliss, now becoming the first board back there at six flat. Good racing here at lap 18. Jack Sprague on the inside in the white, number 31. Trying to make a pass on Mike Bliss. Remember a few years ago when he exploded on the scene, sitting on the pole for the Grand National 300 down there at Charlotte, North Carolina. Sprague, very smooth racer. Mike Skinner stays in front and will return to the Milwaukee Mile after this message and a word from your local station. Palmdale, California, has moved around. Mike Skinner and taken first place. A nearly one lap duel between the red 16 of Hornaday and the number three of Skinner. And for the moment, the three-time winner is out in front, but Skinner's coming back after him. Qualified on the mile at 111.228 miles per hour. Skinner took the pole at 112.535. Here they are, first and second to the line. Now working in the 25th lap. Ron Hornaday, three-time winner in truck racing this year at Tucson, Arizona, Bakersfield, California. And that beautiful Evergreen Speedway up in Monroe, Washington. Skinner looks inside. He wants to lead back, but he can't do it as Hornaday moves down to the inside going into the turn. Now he moves up a little bit, and here comes Skinner. Side by side for the lead. Skinner dives back down to the bottom. Hornaday right alongside even to the line. Give it to Hornaday on that lap. Skinner back on the inside. And he goes a little high, and here comes Hornaday. But he couldn't quite pull it off. Papa John's going to have cardiac arrest at number 16 before this one's over. Truck racing doesn't get any better. You've seen Mike Skinner wave his hand in the back glass there. That means, hey, easy on me here. We're racing too hard at this time of the race. I think what happened is Ron Hornaday got past the truck in front of him and showed him the line for about a lap or two, and then the three truck, the good wrench truck, started running low, seeing what he was doing. So now they now they both have found each other's grooves out, and this is going to be a great race. Down Let's to the bottom again, Hornaday, and the 18-year veteran Mike Skinner, originally out of Ontario, California, was able to throw the block and keep that good wrench machine in first place. Here's Mike Joy. Doug Rickard, Ron Hornaday's crew chief's got a big smile on, but do you want to be racing this hard this early? Well, you know, it's always nice to know what your truck's capable of doing, and uh, right now I think Ron's running a nice conservative pace. We're talking to each other on the radio, and, uh, you know, we're just looking for halfway. Uh, he hasn't said anything about the truck so far, but everything's going good for this Papa John's Action Collectible Chevrolet. Early as he came up on Jerry, Jerry Glanville to put a little, another lap on him, Concerned about tire wear here. These guys are putting on a great race, running really hard. Back in third is Dennis Setzer taking it real easy. I don't think it'll be long before he'll be a factor, although he is a half a straightaway behind. It's still going to be a long race, but these two are putting on a whale of a race. And from my experience here, I can't help but think that these tires, uh, with the racetrack service as gritty as it is, it's going to come into play. Here's Hornady going underneath the, uh, the good wrench truck again. Hornaday just digging on the bottom. Retaking the lead. Skinner back to second. And here comes oh! Skinner back on the inside as Hornaday goes high. That's a typical Dale Earnhardt move. <laughs> you would almost think that it was that Chevrolet that Earnhardt drives in Winston Cup because so many times people have passed him. When they slip up a little bit, he drives rock back under. Like midgets up there in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. In and out, darting back and forth. What a show. Staying third is that Dodge of Setzer, Rick Corelli in fourth, Johnny Benson in fifth, Rutland in sixth, Butch Miller is in seventh, Jack Sprague is eighth, Porter Gay is ninth, Mike Bliss is in tenth, P.J. Jones is eleventh. And Joe Rutman just made a pass the last lap on Johnny Benson and took over the fifth position. Uh, here comes that number 30. That's that Dodge product. What a story in this vehicle. 
last time out. Proposition, sorry. Chrysler has come up with such aerodynamic race cars. Everybody is wondering when are they going to get into NASCAR Winston Cup? Well, now they've got into truck racing, so that's like a tease. These trucks and the cars are so aerodynamic, they're saying, hey, if we can bring these into the car circuit also, they're really going to be fast. But we still haven't seen no major headway out of the, uh, the corporation of Chrysler yet. Of course, they're doing a lot of things in other forms of motorsports and drag racing in particular and, and some of the road racing. Here's Corelli in the number six. And the car owner of that machine were going to be at his track going out to Colorado in the Denver area. Next time we're with him for our next truck race, which is their next truck race. Three-eighths of a mile. Real old-fashioned racing like what uh, Kenny Wallace grew up on. That's right. You know, Rick Corelli is a great, uh, great race car driver. He's been out on the West Coast for years. He's been everywhere now. As you watch his six truck go down the straightaway for all the fans out there, if you notice the surface on the racetrack, all those black patches, once again, the track is very bumpy. They're manipulating the bumps and getting better and better as the race goes on. See the black patches everywhere? Well, that really affects these trucks bouncing it, and shocks are very important. You can see the front straightaway very bad, so he is manipulating every corner and learning a lot more and getting faster. Another pass about to take place. They're going to pave this place in September. 27 years since the scene of paving job. They paved it originally back in 1954. It was a great dirt track. Here's Hornaday. He's got that preferred line down on the bottom of the track, but he gets loose. He got sideways coming off the turn. Well, he was heavy on the gas. A little yep. too much throttle. He gets loose, and I'll tell you, that's not that good early in the race, but he, he's got to calm down now, cool that right rear off, so he has it the last thing the rest of the race. He probably heated that right rear Goodyear tire up about 10 degrees doing that. Ready to lap Bobby Breback. Skinner to the inside. Hornaday comes with him. Chevrolet's maintaining first and second. Dodge still in third. Rick Pirelli and Chevy up to fourth. And you've got Joe Rutland's board now in fifth spot. Here we go again for the lead. Those guys just are not content to sit there and ride this first half out. And I tell you, this is a race car driver, and you know that's what I am. I'd be doing the same thing right now. We sit up here and we say, hey, you know, take it easy. But you can't. A race car driver, you're going to race, and that's what you're going to do. If that truck will go, you're going to you're going to make it. You're going to put it wherever it wants to go as fast as it wants that's to go. That's right. This is this is a lot of fun, and you're not going to see any better truck racing than this anywhere. They come off a of turn four, head down this long straightaway here at the Milwaukee Mile. What a legendary racetrack, and this is great for these trucks to be here for the first time. This will definitely be an annual event. 36 flat being worked right now. And uh, we got caution on the track. Yellow is out. Caution down at lap 36 with Hornaday leading. Skinner second, Setzer third, Corelli fourth, Rutman fifth, Jack Sprague. And there is debris in turn one being reported. Jack Sprague in the number 31, we were told his window net was down, and there was a consultation flag probably about to come out on his car running in sixth position, just as that caution came out. More on that story when we return. Let's take a look at these standings. To the top ten here, Hornaday now in front, Skinner in second, but you can throw a coin in the air and call it heads or tails on that every lap. Setzer, Corelli, Benson, the top five, a little further back. that in a moment, I guess. Actually, Joe Rutman is in the uh, fifth position. Now, Benson has dropped back to sixth. So right. We have uh, Gordon Gay seventh, Rodney Combs in eighth, Bob Strait in ninth, and the computer is in Austin. <laughs> this is great for these truck racers right now. You've seen Butch Miller there with his lid up earlier, and he right now, he's trying to think, what does he need to do to this truck to make it better at what we call halftime? 39 laps have gone by now. When they stop, they're going to say, hey, here's what I need to do to this truck. So there's Butch right now with his lid down. Uh, very dark shield. He's putting it back up to get a little bit of air. And he's probably communicating with his crew chief, trying to figure out what he needs to do to be a little bit better. Any idea if it's hotter in these cabs than it is in a Grand National or Winston Cup piece of equipment? Well, I, I tell you, it's been hot lately. But I think it's a little bit hotter there because they don't have a lot of ventilation. Here's Mike. Jack Sprague has a flat left rear tire. This is the only condition under which you could change a tire and not lose five laps due to penalty. 
Uh, he was black flagged just as the caution came out for debris for a window net down. They have since replaced that on an earlier stop. Johnny Benson called into his crew. He says, is the sway bar hooked up? And they said, yes, the rear bar is hooked. John said the, tr the truck just felt uh, like the handling had gone away as if it had come disconnected. P.J. Jones says he can't get the front end to stick to the racetrack. Even when he's off the brakes in the corner, uh, he's got a bad push. And Joe Rutman in the number 84 Ford says his truck is really loose coming off the corner. So we will see a lot of adjustments once we come to the halftime. Boy, that is a great break for Jack Sprague. Look at this. The yellow comes out, his window net falls down, he has a left rear flat. So he gets to get a new tire, put his window net back up, and he's back on the racetrack. So that's pretty good luck right there. Stayed in the lead lap. I think he put $10 on the plate this morning, huh? You know he did. That's great. You know, Jack Sprague's a good race car driver, and he's found this truck series. Motorsports Design is, is behind him and helping that team out. They struggled early, and he's running great in the points race right now. Jack Sprague out of Spring Lake, Michigan. Did a good job here. Take a look at the CBS Sports Racing Schedule on Saturday, July 15th at 4 o'clock in the afternoon out at Colorado National. That is some beautiful short track. If you like short track racing, CBS will give it to you for the first time here on CBS. Real old-fashioned short track racing with brand new fashion super trucks. Then, of course, it's off to the Die Hard 500 at Talladega. Always one of our favorites and so competitive. 1 o'clock Eastern, July the 23rd. And don't forget our next Grand National race, Sunday, November 5th, Decision Maker. And the Grand National ranks the Jiffy Loop Miami 300. And we understand that August 8th, August 8th, they're going to turn wheels for the first time. Chad Little's going down there for some tire testing for good years. So things are really coming to life at Homestead, the Homestead Motorsports Complex, where we'll be November 5. Down for the green, 40 laps complete. Hornaday to bring him up to the line with Mike Skinner in second, and what a show they put on. Lap cars down to the inside. Cars will lead lap on the outside. We're ready to go racing. Those are all trucks. <laughs> Every single one of them. Good resist again. You'll catch me. See, that's perfect, Kenny. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 You've already heard me make <laughs> mistake several times. I tell you what's going to be interesting now. We've had a caution here to gather all these trucks, not cars, back up, and we're going to see who really has got what now. Yeah, well, Dennis sets are sort of riding and, and taking care of his tires, and is it time to go now? And Rick Corelli had really been running strong. He had, Early in the race, he got pretty far behind the leaders, but then he began to pick up all the little bit, so he's sitting there in fourth place. Challenge right now by Joe Rutman. Joe Rutman in the Ernie Urban truck. Yep. Uh, that's Ford. Rutman Ford looks so good at Bristol. What a move he made on Miller in the final moments of that one. He's right back in it. There's the front three. Hornaday, Skinner, and Setzer. I talked to the fifth place truck on your right hand side of your screen, Joe Rutman. He's really happy. He hasn't won a race in a long time. He's coming off of a great victory as uh, the sixth truck goes high and now uh, Joe Rutman underneath him. And he's won here at USAC Stock Car Racing back in the 70s. There he is getting through down on the bottom. Joe Rutman picking up the spot. That'll put him up in the fourth. Drop Corelli back to fifth. Remember, Rutman had dropped all the way back to eighth in the early part of the race. Apparently his truck was pushing a little bit. Here's a lead or a challenge for the lead at least. Skinner almost had it made. He might have it made now as he gets Ooh. underneath Hornaday once again coming off turn four. And here's Dennis Setzer. Surely he won't make try to make it three. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> Just as we thought, Ned, the Dennis Setzer truck in third right there, running real easily. Now he's got the tires pulled off. Let's see how long he can stay there with this great duel in front now. What a show it would be if he could give one of those Chrysler products a win. Ford won the last time out after Chevy had taken the first eight races of the season. But look at that number 30 haul the mail. Now this lap time that we're seeing here on the screen isn't going to be very impressive with them running side by side because they won't run as fast as if they were running in single file. Here's Setzer. He's going to try to make it three wide. Uh -oh. well, Dennis Setzer from Newton, North Carolina. Rear Lackey's number 30. Seven mile an hour average on the Milwaukee Mile, folks. He's and the NASCAR Super Trucks are getting into it big time. Center's got to go run. He has the inside, but he backs off. Smart move there. That would have been a wreck. That was a great move, but you know, he, it was risky, but he said, hey, look, I'm going to get up there and mix it up with these guys. I think if he'd have got the nose up even with their nose, he would have gone on in there. But he didn't quite have it that way. And boy, he is working on it. 
His truck is impressive. He's been able to stay low and yet get up underneath them. Hey, you talked about product mix, guys. Look at this show. Two Chevys in front. Dodge in third. Ford in fourth. You can't get more competition than you're getting right here at the Milwaukee Mile. The NASCAR Super Truck Series. Hornaday, Skinner, Setzer, run from the top four. All that side-by-side -side battling has bunched his whole truck race up. It's unbelievable right now. Sets are going low, looking low underneath the three truck. Top five, eight-tenths of a second apart. They seem to calm down a little bit now and then. Yeah, the crew chief probably got under and said, hey, come on, we got to make it to halfway. Maybe they were monitoring us and said, hey, you need to back off a little bit and let those TV guys get their ground. <laughs> Here's Setzer underneath the three truck again at the Goodrich. Boy, he is getting a run off that second turn. Dennis Setzer into Dodge number 30. I think he'll get it going into the turn. Let's see. He backs off a little bit, but he'll get that thing turned, and he's been getting a good bite off of turn four as well. Down below that yellow line, that's where they get the best traction. Mike Skinner's been doing a great job, but he's only been going a little bit higher than he needs to going to turn three, which opens the door up for anybody that can stay low down in turn three and four. This is turn one and two right now. Setzer's on the inside. Try, this, is where he's the, this is where that red number 30 truck's been strong, right there. Uh, two. Yes, he's been strong right there. He didn't have the, the angle coming off the turn that time that he needed. He had to pitch it a little bit coming off there, so he ran even up the back. He's being he very nice going into these turns, so he's backing off and leaving Skinner plenty of room there. Yes, and the 30 truck right now is using such great patience because you can sit there and run on the outside body and just drive him crazy on the outside. You can hold him down. The truck on the inside can't run the line he needs to. The three truck is holding him down. Pitching him down. Yellow is out. Caution is out once again at lap 49. And they don't race back to the flag in this series. You see Mike Skinner backed off. So even if they made a pass, it wouldn't count. They'll go back to the way they did across the start finish line last time. I like, I like the rules of the series, man. Yeah, that's good. Really, it, it's safer, certainly. It really is. You know what happens is we've seen several times where there's been a bad crash. Say, coming off of this corner right here, turn four. If there's a bad crash and it says, hey, let's race back to the caution, you take a chance at running into the guy and really hurting somebody. So this is great. The caution comes out, everybody waves their hand, and everybody holds their position. So we'll take a break and then be right back with more Super Truck Racing from Milwaukee. And truck Racing. How about a packed house in Milwaukee? 650 horsepower trucks. The NASCAR Super Trucks are putting on some kind of show as you watch Joe Rutman working Corelli on the outside, the number six truck, for fourth place. They've run three laps under green while we're in that commercial break. The leaders continue to be Hornaday, Skinner, Setzer. This is your battle, and it's Joe Rutman pushing that forward up through on the bottom. Those two drivers have traded that position several times in the last 10 laps. Looking to back your screen there. Everybody running hard for 10th, 11th, and 12th. Even though these guys are leading this race, they're fighting as hard as they can back there around 10th and 11th. We're not too many laps away from their break. 20 machines. Almost <laughs> hard lap. Folks, this is hard because we have been covering these car races for so long. But this is great. This is a a great new series. The trucks are just doing a tremendous job. Joe Rutten getting a little bit looser, hitting one of those bucks coming off the turn four. Hey, they're all having to take an extra handful now. Those tires are getting a little bit with 55 complete. Here's Dick Berger. Well, Ken, the truck drivers are radioing into their crews, and most of them are saying that they're loose. Mike Skinner has just radioed to his crew, and he says he's loose everywhere. The crew has radioed back and said, cool it, cool it, just let those tires cool off. We've got the halfway break coming, and they have new springs ready for Skinner's truck at that point. Mike Joy. Well, Rick Corelli the number six Chevrolet has gone to school on Joe Ruckman. As Ken pointed out, Ruckman's won some races here and has a lot of laps on the Milwaukee Mile. So, Corelli has dropped in behind that board to go to school on Joe until halftime, see if he can find a better line around this track for his truck. Hey, if you're going to go to a truck race, bring your binoculars, because halftime on pit road is something to see. Here's Corelli back underneath that Coca-Cola board of Joe Ruckman. What a show between these two. They have really been switching back and forth for the fourth position. And Ken, a truck that has really been coming up through the field is Jack Sprague. Remember, we saw him make a pit stop a while back? He was 19. There he is, right there in that white truck. Yeah, he's seven. Yeah, has come all the way up through there. 
Stop at 31. Keep your eye on Sprague. He's flying. I tell you, Sprague's misfortune of that old left rear tire blown out was a good fortune. But guys, now he's got a new tire on the left rear, giving him a lot of fight getting up off this corner. I'll tell you what, it looks like he's got 20 more horsepower than anybody. He is really coming in the front, Ned. Yeah, it, it just gets, as you say, tremendous traction coming off the turn. Here's that battle for the lead again. All right, second and third. That was Setzer coming up on. There's Hornaday out front. And Mike Skinner in second in the black number three. Then a Setzer in the red number 30. We're down within the final laps of this halfway break. These guys are just trying to nurse these trucks to it. Six laps to the break. Six laps to halftime. And halftime is a feature of NASCAR Super Truck Racing. Ten minutes. Do anything you need. Change rear ends. Change motors. Well... I gotta tell you, you have to get Junior Johnson to remember to change motors. They changed one of what? 12, 14 minutes one time. Years ago, you used to change motors until NASCAR outlawed it. Said so no more motor changes. Everybody was burning their hands, causing injury, just trying to get a motor changed. That 31 truck of FedEx Sprague passed two trucks on the last lap. He passed both Johnny Benson and Joe Rutten. He's up to fifth, and I bet those guys are saying, where did he come from? But little do they know he's got a new left rear tire. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, one tire means a lot of difference. Here's Setzer on the bottom. Ooh, he's holding it. Gets a little bit loose there. See, if he had had that new left rear tire, he wouldn't yeah, have done he's that. He's just <laughs> right off that turn up on the inside of Skinner. It's it. There's Frank coming up on Rick Riley. You know, this is what makes racing. This is a great story. 31 trucks starting dead last on that last couple cautions ago, I guess, there, and now really flying to the front. And on a track that's really very difficult to pass on. Very difficult. you have a big advantage, which he does have in the handling characteristics of that truck right now, primarily because of that new left rear tire. You see Rick Corelli in the six truck, ooh, running very high. And then Jack Spag really low, gaining a lot of room on, but not coming off as good as he needed to. Yeah, that'll take a little bit of that off of that, that advantage he had when he spun that left rear wheel coming off the turn. Three laps to halftime, guys. Hornaday running off of the first half, but they'll tell you the first half is just getting set up for the second half. This is where you really feel your rig out, know what the conditions are. How much drafting among these trucks on a track like this? Well, the drafting is not that important, but it is. Ooh. Sets are getting loose, coming off of four again. But right here, when he goes into the corner behind this three truck that close, he's going to make that three truck very loose. Let's see what happens if he can stay on the bottom. See how the three truck pushes out a little bit there, taking the air off the rear spoiler. Now he's getting a better bite. Chevy versus Dodge as we come down to end the first half. Skinner against Setzer. California against the Carolinas. Dennis Setzer grew up, grew up in my hometown. I saw him start his career at Hickory, North Carolina. When you were the promoter. Raced his, uh, raced, he, he was in an amateur division then, but uh, has been a big winner in late model stocks of NASCAR. How's it go, Ned? Hickory, North Carolina, where legends are born, right? That's what they say. Ah, what a great old racetrack. I love that place. Yeah, they got it printed on the, on the wall there. This is a great truck race. We're coming down. There's not very many laps left right now. And you can see no, we're the there. fifth place trucks are moving in now. Yep. Corelli moving in. Jack Sprague real close on Corelli. They'd like to pick up a position or so if they could. That'd just be that one less they'd have to pass in the second Yellow half. coming down as they come to the stripe. Skinner in there. Sets her behind him. Hornaday leading the pack across to complete the first half going to be a lot of fun here seeing what options these guys will take try to make themselves a little quicker for the payoff this is going to be a lot of fun with mike joy and dick bergeron in the pitch right now because this is what's going to be see legacy's car being rolled back behind mike as they get ready to come out feel organizing and dick bergeron has more well mike bliss's crew has also done an awful lot of work he came in with no brakes at all what's it like to run out here with no brakes yeah, we lost the brakes about 10 laps into the race, so I was just out there cruising along because I didn't want to didn't want to pound the wall down. So uh, we got the brakes back now, and everything looks good. Yeah, I saw it. He did have a good, solid pedal right now, but I can't imagine going into a corner here at 110 miles an hour and having nothing. That pedal went right to the floor, Ken. Be a wild moment. And he managed to stay on the lead lap, too, uh, even though we saw him back off out there and wondered if he had an engine problem or something, but we know now what he was, but he did a great job in staying out there without any brakes. 
20 cars remain in the lead lap as we prepare for the second half of this 125 mile super truck championship race grab your hot dog get yourself a soda and get ready as we prepare to go racing once again truck style at milwaukee February. CBS will bring you live flag to flag coverage of the great American race. So the field is rolling once again here. We're ready for the second half. Hey, tomorrow here at Milwaukee, as they take a couple of laps, the uh, Bush Grand National cars, which you saw on CBS from Watkins Glen last week, well, they'll roll them out with Dennis Setzer on the pole tomorrow. Mike Wallace, your little brother, will be second. Jeff Green will be third. David Green will be fourth. And Kenny Wallace fifth when they come down to start that 250 miler. You got anything for him tomorrow, That's Kenny? That's me, man. Oh, I think I do. You know, the car's running really good, and uh, I just qualified fifth. No really reason. It's just where we ended up. We're less than a tenth off the pole, and... Uh, It'll be interesting. Lining up beside Larry Pearson. Boy, that's a great row. Larry's a great race car driver. Sir. I'll tell you the story here as we look at the trucks going into turn two here. You know, Dennis Setzer, uh, we showed some footage of him there during that break. I mean, you know, it always seems when somebody's down and out, something good happens. I mean, you know, they're the his Grand National team's getting ready to close up. Here the guy is. He's on the pole for tomorrow's race here at Milwaukee. The last performance by that team. Right. And right now, he's, he's a threat to win this race. It'd be great for him to have a really good week here and uh, you know just something come along to keep their his team going this truck right here his career right now is uh, he's a great driver but they're threatening to close his team up and he's running great right now so let's hope the best for this 30 truck to run really good right now because this is a story he told me yesterday that he plans to run about six or eight truck races the balance of this year he wants to stay in the bush series if possible take a look at the start of the race for the first half this is how it began 64 laps ago it began with a crash a couple of cars got, trucks got banged together up there in the middle of the pack and then in the back of the pack it really got wild six trucks in all were involved in that first crash before they even got to the start finish line this is a technical lap none counting lap right now these last two laps will get green and we come by this time and go racing once again NASCAR super truck style. If you like the super trucks, uh, drop a line to NASCAR down in Daytona Beach to Dennis Hult, H-U-L-T-H. It's the guy that's, uh, there were four principals out on the West Coast that got this thing started, but Dennis, H-U-L-T-H, he's the guy that's really been uh, the proponent of the truck race series. And when they started, the promoters, even when they had just three or four trucks, said, okay, we'll take the gamble on it. They were sure they were going to, to do it. I think he spells his name. I'm going to do it another way, Ken. Okay. One of us will be wrong. It's H-U-T-H. H-U-T-H. Yeah. So, so we won't have him. Uh, you're dead right. One of us is wrong. You're dead right. No, okay. as always, you're 100% right. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Absolutely. You know, these trucks. You notice he said car was wrong. Yeah, well, yeah. we're <laughs> all making it. The, these trucks have been interesting because what happens is, you know, we need corporate backing to race. And the trucks have are all over the United States. They outsell cars big time. And uh, what better thing to do than to put trucks out here and run them and, and, and get a sport going. And, uh, you know, we got the off-road truck racing, and now we're getting ready for the start. And there's the tailgate. Hey, I'm a pickup truck man. I love pickups. i got to have one in my driveway. That's right. Have a truck. 358 cubic inches, 650 horsepower, getting cranked out with 20 cars in the lead line as we go back racing. Ron Hornaday, Skinner up in front, sets her third, Corelli fourth, Sprague fifth, Rutland sixth, Benson at seventh, Miller in eighth. As they go down into that back straightaway on the Milwaukee Mile. And we'll see in a few laps here all of those changes that many of the drivers made. How will it affect their trucks? Dennis Setzer, they're running third, did not get a real good start. Let's see if he can close it up. He said in the beginning that he was not real good on starts. Yeah, he got behind a lap truck and uh, cost him a little time. Here's Skinner going for the lead. Didn't waste any time. He got on the inside of Hornaday coming off of turn four. He's going to make the pass coming up, or is he? Coming off of turn two, yes, he gets that bite, and there he goes. Skinner looking for win number five of 1995. Back down in front of Hornaday. Well, the changes that made it halfway, Mark, now, the three trucks still a little bit high, and the 16 truck, Ron Hornaday, still real low. They're still running the same groove that they did earlier. Look at that battle just behind them. Fourth place, and there you see Sprague on the inside of Corelli. And he makes the pass. He said at halftime that he believed he could win this race. He's on the way. Rutman there in six in the number 84 truck. 
That 31 truck at the left of your screen, Jack Sprague said he put in a bigger sway bar. What that'd do is that'd take roll out of the front end. In other words, the front end will not roll over as much, and it will keep weight on that left rear tire, making tighter. Exactly. That could be a, a bigger factor later on as the tires get worn than it, than it might be right now. Jack Sprague in the 31 is closing on sensor in number 30. The Spring Lake, Michigan, 31-year-old campaigner. Six in points is definitely moving up. The white, red numeral, number 31. Corelli and Rutland behind him. What's interesting about Jack Sprague's sponsor, Motorsports Design, that is one of the people that supply all the decals for these trucks located in the High Point, North Carolina. From Joe Rutland's vantage point in six. Skinner has led 35 laps today. Hornaday, 33. And Sensor nearly won. And here's the bid for the lead once again. That on the inside comes Hornaday. He's got a run on him going into turn three. He'll make the pass, and Sensor has caught them. Boy, they are having a good time. Look at Skinner come back on the outside and just flog that rig. Can't imagine with these relatively fresh tires that, that he could stay out there and get that good of a bite, even with fresh tires on that outside, but he's doing it. I thought that Hornaday would get a better bite coming off the inside. Burks right there in third place. Setzer drives up on the inside along with Hornaday, and Skinner still fights his way about a foot in front. This is at lap 70. They are working the 70th lap. And Skinner on the outside makes the move. You know, although that three truck is not Dale Earnhardt, that reminds me of Dale Earnhardt so much, just aggravating the heck out of you, staying on that outside, and just keep running your lap after lap. You can't let your truck slide up because he's there and done. That's vintage Dale Earnhardt, although it's Mike Skinner and doing one heck of a job. Next super truck race on the 3 Colorado, that beautiful Colorado national track. If you like short track racing, folks, you're going to get to see some here on CBS. This is the second time this year that the Super Trucks have run on the mile at Phoenix, Arizona. They were a great success, and it was Skinner. Here comes Setzer down on the inside. Ron Hornaday went a little bit high in turn four. That gave Setzer the opening that he was looking for. But can he make the pass? Hornaday couldn't make the pass a moment ago down on the inside on Skinner. Can Setzer do it? 340 cubic inch Dodge Magnum. A little bit of work on it, up to 600 horsepower. Running side by side with Hornaday, and Hornaday at 16 pulls away. Boy, Back yeah. on the inside, here comes Setzer. Live from the Milwaukee Mile, their first appearance, the NASCAR Super Trucks. And they are giving a capacity house here today some kind of Independence Weekend celebration. I believe Setzer, yes he does, he has it now, but he goes high, and here comes Hornaday back on the inside, Hornaday had to back off, good move there. Great job by the number 16 truck backing off and letting the 30 truck go, you know, I, only, I think the only nemesis that truck in front right there has is that I don't think he's got as much horsepower as the rest of those trucks do, he really drove in that corner hard, slid up, and then Ron Hornaday kept from getting into it. Yep, they, they could wreck both of them there, but heads up driving by Ron Hornaday to keep from uh, perhaps spinning both of them out. Now Setzer sets his sights on Mike Skinner, and Skinner had pulled away by about 10 front leads there while the 30 and 16 car trucks were running side by side, but now Setzer is mowing him down. This is a great truck race. They're both running the same groove right there as you see them. The three, car, three truck gets a little bit lower in the 30 truck, but this is a great race right here. He's trying to run the leader down and, and make another uh, lead change out of it. Here's Rick Corelli back to fourth. Yeah, Corelli has passed the 31 truck, and now Joe Rutman on the inside of Jack Sprague. So Sprague's truck took off there for a few laps. But now that those tires are heated up, Kenny, you wonder if he might be pushing a little bit with that bigger sway bar. You're right, Ned. Joe Rutman and Jack Sprague both made changes. It looked like Jack's was the best change, but 10 laps later, now it looks like Joe Rutman, that red truck exiting turn four right now, has made the better change for the long run. Joe Rutman, this truck right here, won in Bristol last week. He's really on a high right now. He hasn't won in a long time. He's a great race car driver. This is Ernie Irvin's truck that Joe Rupp is driving. Now you're watching the screen of Dennis Setzer on your right 
and Mike Skinner on your left. 75 of 125 laps complete. P.J. Jones pushing number one up into seventh position. We'll get back to him in a moment. Here's the slugfest up in the point position for the lead. Skinner has it. Sets are trying to take it away. It's Chevrolet in front. Dodge in second at turn one. Setzer has not led this race. He has never led in a truck race because he has never run in one before today. Ned, you know what's interesting? That 30 truck has been dominant the last two weeks. Jimmy Hensley drove it last week and was going to win the race and had motor problems. Now Dennis Setzer's in it. It doesn't seem like it matters what driver is getting in that 30 truck. They are running up front. That's yeah, a great truck. Greer Lackey, the owner down there in uh, the North Carolina. Taylorsville. What, North yeah, Carolina. Alexander County. What a job he has done. Has a little dealership. And he's put together a super truck here in number 30. Here's Mike Joy. And we're not the only folks that notice it's Dennis Setzer's first day in that truck. Will Lind is the team manager for Mike Skinner. And he told Skinner on the radio, don't forget, we're not racing. We're not racing this guy for points. Just keep him behind you and don't so much worry about him. Take it easy, take it easy, and save your tires. That's what they are now telling Mike Skinner, and maybe he did just that with Setzer getting passed for the lead. Well, you may be seeing history in the making. We've got a Dodge going into first place. Rear Lackey, who owns that truck, has a company called Taylor Togs in Taylorsville, North Carolina. A clothing, small clothing company. Ned and Ken, you know what's going to be interesting? Let's look at our statistics later on down here. When was the last time a Chrysler, Chrysler make one a NASCAR race? Well, Hornaday on the inside of Skinner for second spot as Setzer begins to draw away. And Hornaday sees him and he wants to make a pass for second. Moving up Rick Corelli back there in fourth. Joe Rutman has almost a quarter of a track back to his position as he runs in fifth. Here's Dick Bergman. Not only did the drivers in this series come from a wide variety of backgrounds, the crew chiefs do too. This is Freddie Graves. He is Dennis Setzer's crew chief. He is out of super modified racing where they don't have radios. Watch his mouth. It's not moving. He hasn't told Setzer a thing all afternoon. Setzer is setting his own pace, running his own race. The pit right next door is Mike Skinner's, and they're talking to him about every lap, telling him how to run his show. There's Setzer for the lead. Dick Bergen, you just wonder what Dennis Setzer knows because he's on the pole already for tomorrow's race. Now he's dominating this race right now as he's drawn away from the truck of Ron Horner Day. Used to see him run those sportsman races at Charlotte. He'd never win there. He won at Pocono, won up at Loudoun in one of those uh, super speedway sportsman events. But he always knew uh, that guy just had it. So intense, so focused, a bit like Craven. And right now, leading back to Milwaukee after this message and a word from your local station. The Milwaukee Mile, built in 1876, been home to many forms of racing. Originally, a track for horses. In 1903, it hosted its first car race. And over the years, more national championships have been run here than anywhere else. The oldest major track in the U.S. even hosted the 1939 NFL championship game, the Packers beat the New York Giants 27-zip. And somewhere in the infield, they say there is an elephant left from old circus days buried in there. Well, these behemoths today are putting on, they're the biggest things in NASCAR. Let me tell you, what, 3,400 pounds? There's the 29 that's uh, had a lot of trouble. That Winnebago rig of Bob Kazalowski yeah, got torn up on that very first lap coming down to the start. And he has now taken it behind the pit wall and out of the race, apparently. And might also say that Kerry Teague has taken his truck out of the race. So that's going to leave us with about 26 of them out there running. That's you know, one of the four Dodge cars that uh, was... Uh, the trucks, <clears throat> trucks that start, trucks that started today. It's race. okay. Hey, tomorrow on the CBS Sports Show, it's a battle of the heavyweights. When the former WBC World Heavyweight Champion Lennox Lewis of Great Britain takes on Justin Fortune in a 10-round go. Plus, women's pro beach volleyball live from Newport, Rhode Island. That's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern here on CBS. Here's Mike.
Ken, before we went to break, Kenny Wallace asked, what does Dennis Setzer know? He knows that tomorrow he starts this car on the pole, and then this whole rig, all these guys, this whole team is out of a job. Dan Welch is going to close down his Grand National team. So Setzer is here for the audition. All the Winston Cuppers are watching. Their race in Daytona is already over today. All the Bush teams are here. He's looking for a new job. Dick Bergeron. Well, Mike, the points leader, Butch Miller, was just in here, and they put the wrenches on his truck to try to adjust it. They're still trying to get that thing right. It's not quite right. Well, at least it hasn't been, and they hope it's righter now. 20th for Butch Miller. Five third-place finishes, and they sure missed the setup today. I hate that for Butch. You know, uh, I was going to run the race today in Daytona. We had problems and missed it, and I picked Butch Miller to qualify my race car for tomorrow's race, but... Uh, Butch is having a tough time out to the Race summary, folks. There's Butch Miller in 20th position with that Ray Bestis machine. Let's take a look at the race summary after 86 laps, 86 miles. Lead changes now five. The latest has put Dennis Setzer and a Dodge into the lead, averaging 68 miles an hour on this mile track. Cautions four of them for 11, 11 laps. come by. That means that we will go back under green at 87. Once again, for anybody just joining doesn't know much about racing, as you see these trucks wiggling back and forth, no, they're not crazy. They're taking and trying to get some heat put in those tires so when they do go fast, they stick. As everybody knows, sometimes if your tires are cold, they'll get the sliding net. Plus the fact going around here under caution, they might pick up with the rubber being hot on the tires and they'll pick up rubber that's come off of the that they've worn off and then it uh, makes it very rough and so th this can knock that off as well exactly drafting plays a crucial role in racing does it have an effect with the trucks i guarantee here at the milwaukee mile we'll be able to uh, draft down the straightaways and you'll see probably a lot of two abreast and uh, everybody running down well most of the racetracks we've been on have been so short that it really hasn't made a lot of difference phoenix uh, i noticed that when we get right up on the back of some of them it would loosen them up and uh, our truck stayed real stable so i hope we have the same results here i imagine you know i have no drafting experience so i couldn't even tell you what it feels like and of course toby had trouble early he was in that first lap crunch when he got underway he is back out there. He's being shown in 28th position right now, 37 laps down. Green is out. Back in the fourth caution. And as we ramble into turn number one. Ooh, three abreast in some places. There's that 21. You know, Dennis Setzer, he had said he had problems in early going, and he was right. Look what happens on a restart with cold tires. Ooh, the 16 truck gets sideways, and Setzer holds him off. He got a piece of the, of the Setzer rig. Big stories on the outside right there. P.J. Jones running second. Whoa. Wow. He, and he was back there in seventh. Now, there is a charger three wide as they come down the main straightaway. Now, somebody will have to back off before they get to that turn. Let's see who it'll be. I don't, I don't think, think it'll, it'll be, be P.J. And it wasn't Skinner, so it was Ron Hornaday. Smart move by Hornaday backing off. He was in the middle. That wasn't a good place to be. Well, that was a Jones move for sure on the outside. 63 Indy winner. P.J. his kid, P.J., right there for second now in closing. He has come out of nowhere. This is unbelievable. Running in the back of the race, got up to six, and now he's fighting it out with Mike Skinner for second. He is driving like a man with a mission. I'm sure he has one. Started in 10th position, here today. Back in 1964, you could have come to this legendary oval, the Milwaukee Mile, and watched P.J. Jones' dad, Parnelli, went out here in an Indy car race against Boyd, all those great names of those days. You know, I'd like to say hi to Paige Jones, who's recovering from a, a terrible midget or sprint accident. And, uh, P.J. Uh, is out here doing a great job for him, so for all the uh, P.J. Jones family, we just want to say hi to Paige. And Paige is doing real back. well, P.J. told us yesterday. Let's go down to Dick Bergen. 
Dennis Zetzer is having problems on the restart, Ken, because he's not used to the shifter at all. Yesterday was the first time he had ever been in a truck. He didn't get an awful lot of time in it. And this particular shifter has got a long throw to it. So the team is hoping this thing goes green to checker. They don't want to see any more restarts. He wouldn't have known it from that start. Hornaday caught him for just a moment. He was gone as he came out of that second corner and I would presume made his final shift. What is the shifting procedure here when you come down for a start? Well, when you're starting these races in any stock car truck, you're starting in second gear. And what Dick alluded to there was saying long throw. What that meant is going from second to third gear, he's got to move the shifter a long way. So we got a spin coming off the of turn two. John Nemechek, he keeps on going. It's not on your screen. But he has kept going and slowed everybody up in the back. Caution is out. Caution down. So we'll take another caution here, which I believe brings us to five. This comes at lap 92 of 125 to be run here today. These are all the trucks that were trying to miss the truck all the way to your right. The Burger King truck of John Nemechek literally did a 360 coming off a of two. All these guys are trying to catch back up because everybody slowed up to miss the wreck. And this is just what Dennis Setzer did not want. He wanted, as Dick Bergman pointed out, he wanted to go green the rest of the way, but he didn't get it. A lot of great racing coming up in the Super Truck Series. Next will be that Colorado National Track. And when this group comes to town, this is some kind of circus. They have 14 champions from various races, from the Silver Crown Series, from ARCA, from the World of Outlaws, Winston West, name it, ASA, they're all here. We're back at the Milwaukee Mile. We've got a change of leadership. Torrance, California's P.J. Jones has pushed number one up in front into second. Hornaday, Setzer falls to third. Here they come to complete the first lap under green after the fifth caution of the day for debris out of turn two, the reason for that. And we have completed 95 laps at the Milwaukee Mile, and Hornaday goes back in front. Boy, P.J. got a great, he and Hornaday both got great restarts. Here's P.J. going back for the lead. They got great restarts and just blew by Dennis Setzer. And we got some trouble. Glanville in the 83. That's uh, uh, no, Steve Port Portingay. Portingay in the 83. So caution will fly again. They're racing back Number to the yellow right now. Cautiously, though. Hornaday comes across the line just in front of P.J. Jones. That Sears diehard truck of P.J. Jones has got, I believe, a drag, drag motor in. I tell you what, when they drop that green flag on the restarts, and that kid, he just flies to the front. He takes off. Looking for that first win, P.J. Jones in truck racing. Boy, he sure won a lot of other series, but he finished second at Tucson earlier this year out there in Arizona. You know something that's playing out here that we talked about and the race has gone on we kind of forgot about. We said at the outset that I bet whoever's dominating this race early will come in towards the end because it's a long race. You can't change tires. It's kind of what's happening right now. You're seeing somebody leading that wasn't wasn't in the lead or wasn't even in the top five for quite a while. I think we've got a replay here show you what happened. Well, the truck has already spun up into yep. the high groove. Steve Portingay in the number 83. And he's he's back out going again now, but I don't know how much damage he has to the other side. The old coffee critic truck. <laughs> I think we're about a lap or two away here. A little bit of work finishing up over there in the backside. P.J. Jones, when he finished that second place out there at Tucson as we watch Butch Miller come in and incidentally we saw Johnny Benson a few moments ago come in. He's back on the tail end with Lee Lamp and work his way back up through the field. And Scott Legacy also made a pit stop on the other caution and it just made one he's in the pits right now. Some front end damage it looked like on uh, Butch Miller's truck. P.J. Jones made up three laps now to Tucson when he got that second place finish. He just came out and fired him up on those restarts and made up time and got himself back up for a runner-up spot today going for the win you know as good as pj has been on those restarts he's start he's been starting third and he took the lead on a restart he really ought to pull away here you think two or three car lengths we'll have to see what happens they're lining up double file here's mike joy leon ruther is pj's crew chief they made some small changes on at halftime but 
What has he got on those restarts? <laughs> well, he we got a good spotter. He got it watching it real close. He said the other guys are sleeping a little bit. Didn't want to see that caution flag, did you? Did not. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're about to get back to it. The machine of uh, scoop vessels, the off-road legend, number one, getting ready to come back out another time as P.J. Jones brings them down, leading at Milwaukee on the mile. And Ron Hornaday was ready for it. Yeah, he was ready. That was a great start. As a matter of fact, he was getting ready to pass P.J. on the inside. P.J. pulled to the left to block him. And now, ooh, he's pushing the 83 car of Mr. Portigay. And Dennis Setzer right there on Hornaday's back bumper. Oh, we've oh, oh. got an accident here. Yeah, he got into that 83 and took him out of there. And everybody... Well, <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. No caution yet. They're going to see if he can get going. Oh, they got a crank. So and no caution. caution out. Man, what a great job of driving by both of those guys and not really cause a major wreck. And by everybody behind them. That caused, cost Hornaday two positions as both Dennis Setzer and Mike Skinner got by. 25 to go when they come by this time. Down to the last 25 miles. I tell you what, this is unbelievable. The Sears diehard truck of P.J. Jones was not even in this race 10 laps ago. He has come out of nowhere. I mean, he is flying. Take a look at Ron Hornaday's view of that incident up there in turns three and four, folks. You see the coffee critic truck on his outside. What happens? The 83 holds him down. Hornaday's getting loose and gets up into him. Just enough to spin him around. What happens, you go into these corners side by side, you gotta give that guy room on the inside. You can't hold him down because that'll allow him, he'll just slide up and hit you a little bit. He's recovering, he's back out on the track there. Now Dennis Setzer has caught PJ. PJ goes high, that'll open the door for Setzer to try to drive under him. And Skinner's coming with him in number three. Well, Skinner didn't get quite as good a bite off that turn as Setzer did. So he goes into three side by side. They sure got the right gears on that number 30. You see how the one truck of PJ gives him room, enters a little bit high? That way they can both go through the corner. You have to do that. You got to use that etiquette or else you won't make it to the finish line. Boy, that 30 Dodge has been getting a good bite off the turns. Good traction, good setup under that car. Dennis Setzer puts Dodge in front. Here comes Skinner down on the inside. He takes a shot at PJ. Whatever ha PJ has had happen here, it's causing his truck to go high. Either it's pushing or it's loose going into the corners. You notice the diehard truck is sliding up and making more room. Here comes Hornaday underneath him. Back to third, PJ Jones up in front, sets her in second, the number three of Skinner. All four in a bundle. 103, working 104. Hornaday another time to the inside. P.J. slides up high again, opens the door for Hornaday. Just behind them, Carilli is fifth. Billy Sedgwick up to sixth. Joe Rutman is seventh. Bobby Strait is eighth. Mike Bliss is ninth. Resenda is into tenth. Eleventh now is... I think that's 43. Yeah, Rodney Combs. We haven't seen much of him today. And asking. Benson. Johnny Benson from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm going to call him from Wisconsin anymore. <laughs> Johnny Benson from Grand Rapids is up to 12th. Remember, he was 19. He gets himself back into this thing. There you see the 43, the blue car, truck of Combs. <laughs> it's one of the uh, Richard Petty Association. He has an association with the truck. This truck 43 right here is driven by Rodney Combs. Rodney has got an association with Richard Petty, like Ned said. They, what, they got a, a driving school, don't they, Ned, in Charlotte? Charlotte, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Right. Richard Petty driving experience. And I bet the experience. Yeah. Just in front of Rodney was Sprague in the 31, in 12. Sprague made that great run earlier in the show. Up in front for the moment, Dennis Setzer has put a Chrysler. That Dodge looking tough as it pulls to a five-car length advantage. Bob Breback truck being pushed backwards into the garage area. Carilli running fifth, front five, all within striking distance. 
with 15 laps to go. We're back to the Milwaukee Mile. The NASCAR Super Trucks are here. There's the battle for the lead. Dodge in first, Chevy in second. Here's Mike Joy. Foot going up on P.J. Jones, the truck that led this race just a few minutes ago, has dropped a cylinder, and now either it's completely lost power or not able to run competitively. P.J. is hopping out of the truck. The oil temperature has gone skyrocketing. Report was that he had dropped the cylinder. Looks terminal for number one. Meanwhile, for the number one spot, we had had a report, Ken, that, that Mike Skinner's crew had told him, say, hey, back off, save those tires, let that 30 truck go until near the end. It looks like he might have saved those tires just enough. Here he comes. He's trying to make a move. He's going to make the pass going into three. What a great job by Skinner to preserve his tires and go on here now and take the lead with just 12, 13 laps to go. 112 complete when they come by. Sets her back on the inside. Yeah, he's not giving up. Come awfully close together. Boy, oh boy, he's got him in the left rear, moving him up around that lap car. That's that corner. He runs so well, but he's got trouble with that lap machine. Great job by Skinner. Yeah. There's you. There's it. He used to pick that time. He did. He, he, he pinned him in behind that lap truck, and there wasn't anything Dennis could do but back off and follow around again. You come up at 110 miles an hour on that pond, and you have to step out of the throttle. Here's Setzer down to the inside another time. Dennis is doing everything he can to get this lead back. You see him come off the corner, really working that wheel over those bumps. He doesn't want to give this up. He's got a lot of, a lot of drive right now. Mike Joy. B.J. Jones, boy, it looked great while it lasted. Yeah, you know, we struggled the first half a little bit, but got it. Leon and the guys did a great job getting a good car, and uh, uh, we got we took advantage of them sleeping at the starts and uh, just was running pretty good. We just, uh, I think we built up too much right front tire pressure right at the end, and it just started pushing more and more, and uh, then we broke a water hose, but here's our number one. You know, we just had tough luck all year long. But you can say, I just went there high to pay. All right, you've raced them both, the Chevy and the Dodge. Which is the one to beat today? Chevy and the four. Well, the Chevy and the Dodge out there. I think the Dodge is going to win this thing. He's running awful good. P.J. Jones, champion of tomorrow, working with Dan Gurney right now to develop those Indy cars, putting a lot of effort into that program. Here comes Setzer in number 30, back on the inside of Skinner. They're even out of four another time. And you saw that Setzer machine take a little extra swing out there. Yeah, he broke loose a little bit coming off the turn. Ten to go. Setzer back on the inside. Some show here at Milwaukee. CBS's first presentation of the NASCAR Super Trucks. And the little Dodge crawls right up alongside that Chevy. Boy, it just seems like whoever's in the lead just can't hold a great line. And whoever's behind him will go back. Sets her on the inside trying to take the lead again. And this is hard. Watch him on that wheel. Ooh. Yeah, he's getting loose coming off the floor. He's got his foot all the way to the floorboard as he comes off there. And he breaks loose a little bit with him. He pulls up his long side going into the turn. Skinner will go a little bit high. Sets her will use that to get back on the inside again. Great, great racing. Nine laps to go. Talk about Winston Cup competition. Talk about Grand National. Make way for the trucks. Ooh, he got the 30 truck got real sideways right there, but gathered it back up. Ooh, he, he, oh, Dennis is, doing, sideways. Dennis is doing it everything he can right now. You can say right now he's driving his heart out. He has burnt the right rear off that truck. What I mean by that is he's got it so hot he cannot get it hooked up. That right there might have cost him the race. Let's see if the 30 truck on your right-hand side can make another run in, but he really heated that right rear tire up. There we see the passing Butch Miller. Butch uh, made an unscheduled pit stop. He had a left rear tire to go flat a little bit ago, so Butch is uh, having a tough time here today. He's one lap down, being shown in the 19th position. He's now two laps down. And that's going to take him out of the point lead. Joe Rutman, who is six points behind him coming into this battle, will go back first in the NASCAR Super Truck Series as they get ready for Colorado National. And on a Saturday in a couple of weeks, CBS will take you there. Mike Skinner, third in those standings, 44 points behind the leader. He's got a chance to do some big moving as well. I'd like to pass our condolences along to the family of Mark Greco, producer, director, and great cameraman for many years, who lost his life in the Mojave Desert yesterday uh, in an off-road event. 
and, and also kin to Larry McReynolds, who lost his mother yesterday to, to cancer, not before last, actually Larry the crew chief on the Robert Gates Hamilton Ford. Kenny Wallace drove for that team last year, and Larry, uh, a, a big, big family man, and so our condolences to that family. And Dale Jarrett, who's driving that car now, and Daytona had a great run going and had motor problems today. Here's Seth for making another move on him. Cooled that right rear off. Was content for two laps to let the right rear tire get cooled. This truck on your inside, here he goes again. Let's see if he can not get sideways. Comes off the corner straight that time. He's gonna make another run at him, guys, before this is over. Five to go. Dodge, Chevy, showdown at Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dick Burger. Mike Skinner's crew chief with Rich Burgess. Can you hold off that fast, fast dodge that's been plaguing you all afternoon? I don't know. It's been a heck of a race so far. You know, we just have to see. Dennis has been real tough with that dodge, you know. It doesn't matter who keeps their tires the coolest right now. You know, Mike's done a super job at this point with a loose truck. So, you know, they're going back and forth, and they're doing a heck of a job. It's up to the drivers now, Ken. Top Ford, Rutland, back to the six. Last big win for Dodge. As far as I'm concerned, it was 1977. The great Neil Bonnet out there at the Ontario Motor Speedway in those days. Of course, uh, I guess 79, Kyle Petty yeah, and our race yeah, in right. Daytona, but yeah. we talked about in the major, major series. That was Neil. This is where it's at. You see the 30 truck close up, getting in the corner, trying to get underneath of him. Ooh, is he close? <laughs> Here we go. It's going to be a duel down the front straightaway. Give a kiss. He has a nose up alongside. Oh, Kenny look carried that. on into the turn that way. Oh, they're going to get close. Skinner goes oh, a little high. They touch a little bit. What a race. He's got a good fight, Ned, coming up off that corner. Well, but look at that power that Skinner has up on the outside there. It's like a drag race going down these straightaways. The guy on the outside has more momentum and carries it down the back straightaway. And boy, if they don't get into each other, this will be unbelievable. This is, this is for the win. This is for all the marbles. Setzer gets a little loose oh, once again, but he held on that time. Two laps to go. This is the greatest truck race of the year, side by side. Two to go, a lap and a half almost now. This looks like short track. I mean, this is a mile, the Milwaukee mile, and what a performance by they're giving it everything they've got. And it's not over the three truck. You know is going to make another run at him on this last lap. Newton, North Carolina's Dennis Setzer looking for his first oh, in a truck race. Gets out. He little gets little loose. And here comes Skinner back on the inside. Every time he gets in front, Ned, something yep. happens. I don't know if, if the, when you, you mentioned earlier that a truck gets up behind you, it takes a little air off the spoiler. If that guy's loose going in there, I don't know. But he's on the final lap. He's got one more shot. It doesn't look like a good one. He's too far back now. I tell you what, something could have happened. He's dropped back awfully far. But I'll tell you what, give it to Dennis Setzer. What a great, hard job of driving. Tremendous race also for third going into turn three as Rick Corelli gets on the inside of the car number 16 as we watch these leaders. 30 closing. Here's Corelli going at it with Hornaday in the final moments. They're coming down to the line at the strike. Give the win to car, uh, truck number three across the line. It will be Skinner followed by Setzer, Hornaday, and then Corelli. It doesn't get any better than that. Well, standing ovation all around this racetrack for the NASCAR Super Trucks. What a show. I tell you, I got chills on me right now. Everybody here in Milwaukee doesn't get to see a lot of NASCAR racing. Listen to them. They're going crazy. Back to meet the winner at the Milwaukee Mile in a moment. CBS Sports Show coverage of the NASCAR Super Truck Series is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Sears. Come see the many sides of Sears. And by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Mike Skinner wins for the fifth time this year and he gave this crowd a kawicki victory lap came to the line spun it around and went back the other way here's mike joy in victory lane well, that's what they told us the yeah. drivers meeting but yeah. they're reliving the last couple of laps mike skinner dennis sets her water race i'll tell you this just like old times you know dennis and i've had many many races like this dennis a great run yeah it's exciting you know that dodge magnum pickup i'm really excited about that i'll do some more shows with that this year and i'd like to congratulate mike and the good wrench team they've done a great job what a great show ken it, it was a great show indeed take a look 
at the uh, final standings today as Mike Skinner wins again. This time over Denner's sets her right to the line. What a show we're getting ready for in Colorado in a couple of weeks. Hornaday, Carilli, Sedgwick, the top five here on the Milwaukee Mile. Joe Rutman in six. He takes the point lead. Great ovation for those two drivers who put on such a great show here today. And for Ned Jarrett, Mike Joy, Dick Bergeron, and Kenny Wallace, Ken Squire, saying so long from West Dallas, Wisconsin, where Mike Skinner has won the Milwaukee Super Truck 125, a presentation of CBS Sports.